Hello and welcome to this week's Friday Focus. Myself, Graham Munstey, joined by David Howard. David, thanks once again. Back to our normal Friday night action this week and uh, another squeaker, another one-point victory, but a victory nonetheless. Stags of our Monarchs 45, Wester 44. Yeah, as you say, happiness is now 45-44. <laughs> it's a uh, hard-fought victory against one of the most fancy teams in the league. Yep, so another packed show as always tonight. We'll hear from Monarchs Joe Anderson, uh, the very impressive Richie Worrell from Leicester, and we'll have our Heat of the Week, um, which I think this week we'll go for Cameron Heaps and Heat 13. How does that sound? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, David, we spoke during the week um, about how tough it was going to be. Leicester, Scott Nichols, Richie Worrell, Josh Bates, three guys that love Armadale, unbeaten in the league so far. Well, they're not unbeaten anymore. No, they're not now. Uh, as, uh, as, you say, as, we, as we said before, possibly the best away rider last season and one of the best home riders last year. And they lived up to their billing with a yeah. fantastic performance from them. Yep, obviously Scott Nick, I would think, was top scorer with 15, was it? Or yeah, paid, yeah. paid 16, backed up with Richard Wall with 13. And uh, actually, Ryan Douglas was actually the first graph that way. A very impressive seven for a guy that's not really done much here before. Yeah, exactly. And maybe Stuart Douglas, who's known for his tactics, might regret uh, picking uh, Douglas to drop out for, for tactical sub. That's right. Uh, Jose Mourinho with Speedway, they used to call him through the West. Uh, okay. Not that they've got a like, hyperbole through there or anything at all. Uh, maybe a wee bit of a misstep, but... I guess Stuart will probably head down the road just thinking a few points left in the track as well. A couple of tape touch, uh, Connor Mountain comes down in a point scoring position. Both teams are looking to points drop, but I guess it, if you're looking at it from a Leicester point of view, you might be a wee bit annoyed with some of them. Yeah, you're going to be look back at the scorecard and be disappointed. Two, as you say, two tape touches, a faller, and of course, with them trying to team ride in Heat yeah. 13, didn't they quite come off, and uh, those points would have made a difference. Uh-huh. But, uh, but our boys stuck in, done their job, solid all the all the way through and we got the points we needed. You mentioned that there and I think that was really the key thing tonight was it, it was a solid performance. You look down the scorecard, Ricky will probably be disappointed with a score of seven, obviously two last and he's 13 and 15, not what he wants or expects or not what we want or expects number one, but two heat wins. Justin getting there, getting back and back, I think he was paid for nine. Um, Josh, nine and one, Cameron, nine, Joel, six, um, you know, the, the reserves taking a five, one from memory and heat two. A lot of good positives and a lot of solid scoring down the line. Yeah, well, as, as you say, but Heat 2 was probably uh, was excellent from the reserves and Luke yeah. was so unlucky and Heat, heat 12 oh, was yeah. a tremendous effort to from nearly got us that 5-1, but solid all the way through. And one of the things I noticed is we've only had six, six Heat winners tonight, but yeah. everyone ended up being a Heat advantage, so we've got to make that count. That is key. I um, mean, you know, a lot of people look at Heat winners, but let's be honest, you know, you can have 15 heat winners and no win a match. A last, last place is, is just as detrimental as a heat win in yeah. to win in. And you know, that was the difference. Any time the Monarchs took that checkered flag, they were backed up with one of the partners. Whereas maybe from a Leicester point of view, the majority of the heat wins came from Nichols and came from Worrell. And the majority of them were three alls. And that was what made the difference. And yeah, it's 45-44, but... It, it, it sounds silly to say it wasn't as close as that because that's the score, it was. But there was no Heat 15 decider, so there maybe wasn't that peril and, and that worry at the end. No, that's as, as we said already, the Heat 13, the crucial second place of yeah. Cameron Heaps. And then a, a match winning pass from Joe yeah. Anderson, the Heat 14, with make sure that it was only a 2 4, so we were five ahead with one race to go. Yep, and uh, as David mentioned there, Joe Anderson with a cracking pass in Heat 14. We'll hear from Joe now. So, Joe. Tough one tonight, but the Monarchs got there. It might only be one point, but a win's a win. Yeah, a win is a win, and I think we did a pretty good job. And fortunately, like Luke fell off in a 5 1, and yeah. stuff happened. So uh, we managed to get the win, and that's, that, that's what it important us. And from your own point of view, obviously, uh, I think it was six points, some, some battle. You made a couple of gates when you didn't, you were right in the thick of things. So you must be pretty happy with your performance tonight. Yeah, I'm pleased. Like uh, I felt like I had really good gates, but I just lost my drive going into the corner, in the, into the first bend. So. It is what it is, like, it's getting better and better every week now for me. I struggled a bit in the beginning, so it's good now. And obviously we could see that a little bit of rain came in as it went on. Did that change the track any? Did you have to change setups or anything halfway through? No, it was, the track was still the same. It was, it was really nice, pretty slick today, but really nice to ride, so we, can't, we have nothing to complain about. So. And I guess, obviously, I mean, a few people might look and think it's another close score for the Monarchs, but we probably won't come up against a team as tough as that, so it's a good confidence boost. That's the first league match, it's the yeah. first win against the team a lot of people are tipping yeah. to win the league, and we can kick on from there. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we did a good meeting, and actually, we've been struggling a, li- a lot, like everybody's been struggling so far, so well, we, we, we proved today we, that we are still a good team and we're here to win. And then head down to Birmingham on Wednesday, I'm guessing that'll be new for you, you've probably never seen it before? Yeah, I've never been there, so it's always fun to come to a new track. It's usually pretty tricky here in the UK, like for the first first couple of races, but hopefully it's going to be fine and we're coming home with a, with a win again. Uh, well done again tonight, Joe. 
So Joe, obviously started for the benefit of more riding and, and you know, the Swedish league started and stuff now. And we've seen that last year. The busier Joe was, the better he, he was. And that, that augurs well for the season ahead. Yeah, he's looking, he's looking better every week, Joel is. And solid through, I'm sure he probably would want to be winning Heat 14. That's one, one of the races he's got to make his own. Yeah. But he's been no last place he's solid against when you've got Richie Worrell and, and uh, Scott Nichols and a couple of your rides, you're not necessarily going to win. So as long as him and... Josh, I make sure yeah. we've got the big guys and they're not losing silly four twos, and that's what that's what makes a difference. And I think we do have to mention Luke, especially as well. Obviously, he wins heat two, and that heat twelve, he's so unlucky. Right, he gates with with Josh Pickering. He's ahead of Ellis Perks, who was very impressive as well as Josh Bates, who was charging hard. Uh, Bates it looks like he threw a chain the second time tonight. He went down hard, and it was nice to see him straight up. And obviously, Luke had, he was just pushing himself that wee bit much, hit a bit of grip, came down, and, and what a heat five one that would have been for him as it is, and he's left with another expensive bill. Yeah, you we're looking you're looking down at the score chart, looking at each thirteen, fifteen, thinking we need to get some points and eight twelve. Do they try and swap the reserves around? We step kept a look and he was a superb effort. He really deserved that second place and as you say, just a wee bit unlucky. To be honest, I, I was I was watching Josh Bates at the <laughs> back because I was thinking, right, looks yeah. okay for, for second and I saw Bates come off and uh-huh. but uh, but you're really unlucky. And then we moved on to heat thirteen, obviously the Lions made the big start. I looked for all the words that they're going to take the five one. Scott Nichols, team riding, you know, like the, the experienced guy is. Um, but Cameron Heaps is having done it and a big swoop on the line to get him. Yeah, absolutely fantastic for us. It's phenomenal speedway, you know, the two of them are trying their best to team ride and Cam's all over them all the way through and never say die, got to the end and and uh, made that vital point. Absolutely fantastic. Yep. And heat thirteen was our heat of the night, we'll see that now. Heat 13, a very tough one with the top two visitors in this one. It's Scott Nichols, unbeaten from gate one. Ricky Wells, gate two. Richie Worrell, gate three. And Cameron Heaps in gate four. And uh, a shocker of a start for Wells. What is he doing? Visitors lead the way. Tape seemed to go up so quickly there. Wells was nowhere near the first corner. Heaps is chasing hard, Wells on the inside. Disappointment so far for the home side. Heaps is almost in amongst them. Wells is not. Perfect team riding by the visiting pair. Heaps is still quite close, having a real go around the outside there. Busting a gut, but can't get through. Here he comes. Still not there. Once again at the last corner. Heaps going blasting around the outside. Where's he got to? We don't know what he got there. We'll have to wait for the referee on that one. He might have grabbed something at the end there. Fantastic effort by Cameron Heaps. Brilliant team riding by the Lions, but Heaps never gave up. We'll find out in a moment if he grabbed second place. We don't know if he's the race winner, but he deserves a round of applause for his effort. Brilliant stuff, the rider in blue, Cameron Heaps. Um, I guess that just shows, you know, We've got the guys in the team that you know they never give up till that checkered flag, and, and that was a crucial second. So that meant going into heat 15, the match was won. Yeah, that's all those points in line. We've had a few in the last few weeks. It's, they all count. You know, that's, you've got to race right to the checkered flag, and we know at Armadale the finish line's about five five yards yeah. further on for the start line. So that that made a difference in that race, and that's we we know that from our home track advantage. So make sure it counts. Yeah. So obviously we spoke last week after a what was that 40. 4, 45 point victory, whatever it was, against a, a pretty poor Scunthorpe. Um, this week was very different, a tight one point victory. I'd say looking at the Monarchs, the team's probably somewhere in the middle of those two performances. We're not going to have many 67s, but we're not going to come up against many teams like Leicester. So I think we're set on in, and it looks like it's going to be another good year ahead. Yeah, as, as we said, we keep improving, keep improving. And you don't need to be the best team in the league until the end of the season. You yeah. get to the playoffs, as you always say, semi final look forward in the cup get ourselves in the playoffs and get ourselves a chance of winning some silver. Yeah. Yep, um, we also cut up with Leicester's Richie Worrell to get the, the feeling from their camp after the match. Well, one of our heroes from last season nearly came back and caused us problems tonight, uh, but we scraped home in the end. But uh, Richie, a good performance by Leicester, really, and uh, very, very close. Mm, yeah, it was a shame. We just lost there, didn't we? Just at one point. Uh, you could you could pick plenty of opportunities where we could have got that one point back, but the speedway, that's what makes yeah. it exciting. Anything can happen. And 
Yeah. You know, so we're four laps, over 15 heats. So yeah, it was a shame we just lose out, but you know, we still got a point. We target, you know, especially on these away legs, we target a point at least. Um, so we did, you know, we did, uh, we did what we was, we was asked, but it would have been nice to win, yeah, definitely would have. But <clears throat> Adam was a tough team, especially at home. You know, we did have a couple of lads that aren't really comfortable around here, yes. so good effort, you know. Yeah. And it was a good meeting, some good races, so can't really complain, can we? Yeah. As long as the fans are happy, then. Right. Once again, you showed that this is a track that you really know how to get around. That one tremendous race where Josh Pickering got the drop on you, and you shoved your way back through again. Yeah, well, I, I, I knew what was going on. I knew what was coming there, really, because Josh is an outside man. Um, I was off gate one, Josh was off gate four. There was only one place he was going to go and it was around the top. So he went round the top and then cut back, come underneath me. But I knew in, in doing that, he'd have to run wide up there. So I did the same back to him yeah. pretty much at the, uh, the next corner. But it was good fun. Yeah. But he's, he's kind of been coaxing me all day. Well, <laughs> since the season started, to be honest, at, at this meeting, obviously, about the race that I'm going to have. Yeah. Well, the, the race that I'm going to be with him. He's like, oh, make sure you get loads of chair offs on and different things. You know. <laughs> so it, was, uh, it should keep him quiet for a while. Yeah, that, very good. That was your partner from last season, of course. And... Uh, Heats 13 and 15, you really showed your power there, the two of you, and uh, but just missed out, Scott just missed out, obviously, trying to team ride, uh, and it, it just missed it by... Uh, what, what caught Scott out was the start line and finish line aren't in the same oh, place. Yeah. He eased off thinking he was going over the finish line on the, the mm. start line, and that weren't the finish line. Yeah. That's what caught him out there. Uh, but you know, Cameron was on that wide line, and he was trying really hard. Um, yeah. I think that partly... I probably wasn't coming in wide enough to stop his run. I was, I was leaving a little door open for Cameron to do what he did. Uh, and um, you know, me and Scott had a little chat and we shut that door for the 15 and there was no way through for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's been enjoyable watching you again and uh, it's a shame you're not in the blue and yellow leathers this year, but uh, there we go. You're still enjoying yourself and we'll hopefully see you again later in the season. Mm, yeah, no, thanks a lot. I, you know, I was, I did think like heavily about coming back um, you know, one of the reasons for me not coming back was going off my performance last year. You know, it, I was I was really strong here. I didn't want um, to jeopardise. You know, because you know, I, I feel like I'd come back and do the same thing. You know, and I, I, what would worry me is having a great big average going into the year after, and then you know, I'm, I'm kind of you know, I'm not really attractive, or you know, along them lines. So I didn't want I didn't want that to happen. I wanted. I wanted a track to, like Leicester, I've not just gone there for Stuart, I've gone there because uh, it is a good track, it takes a different technique to what this place does, and it's a technique that I'm not, I'm not perfect at, so that's why I wanted, to, I wanted to step away from this small technical track, because it's quite obvious I know how to ride them, yes. um, I wanted to get on something a little bit bigger and learn that, you know, and, and I am learning it, and it's not easy. Because you know, look at my scores. They're not always, um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't score like I do here. You know, I do have them good races and bad races because I'm learning the track speed yeah. quite a lot. So that's that was the reason for me not coming back. Yeah. But I did think hard about it. You know, it was hard not to come back to a club where you enjoy the track so much. And I did. I loved it here last year. Everybody was great, and um, you know, I've got a lot of respect for the club. Uh, you know, they, they took me on when when Glasgow dumped me. So, uh, but that was a there was no. No other reason than purely, I kind of wanted to progress. I wanted to get on a little bit better, and you know, I know how to ride this place. I need to learn how to ride other places and try and better myself. So that was the reason. Okay, Richard. So, well, yes, it's quite interesting. Thank you very much. No problem. Richie, maybe doing Cameron a bit of a disservice there. He says Nicole shut off thinking he'd went over the finish line heat 13. Uh, I don't think so on that one. But, you know, strong performers by Leicester, and they can still take credit from that. You know, that's um, their first defeat. Um, in nine matches, but only by one point. So they go away with a point on the night. You know yourself, you win all your matches at home, you pick up two or three points on the road, a couple of wins on the road, you're in the playoffs. Yeah, th these points will make a difference at the end of the, end of the season. It's all, it's all, all builds up and that's uh, what they need to do. Uh, we would do well to turn them, all, turn them over tonight and make sure we're, we're there. Yep, crucial for the Monarchs, so it was the three points. We got that, as we said, 45-44, the final score at the Stags Bar Monarchs. A big week ahead, David. We head to Birmingham on Wednesday, the first away uh, league match of the year. 
and then okay it maybe doesn't mean a huge amount from the monarchs from a qualification point of view but there's no such thing as a, a derby it doesn't matter next week the tigers when we can still effectively end their championship we shield can, hopes as well we can knock them out at the end of the day and, and we're here for pride we're here yeah. for points and uh, we're, we want to keep improving as i said already so it's a, it's a big match for us so let's make sure we win that and make sure Yep, so as I say, Wednesday at Birmingham, keep an eye on the Monarchs official website for updates on that. Then next Friday, Glasgow Tigers come a call and we'll see you then. Good night.